o'clock in that school by George Cooper. Twenty froggies went to school down beside a rushy pool. Twenty little coats of green, twenty vests all white and clean. We must be on time, said they. First we study, then we play. That is how we keep the rule when we froggies go to school. Twenty froggies grew up fast. Mr. Bullfrog, Raven, Stern called the classes in their turn. Taught them how to know this drive, likewise how to leap and dive. From his seat upon a log, showed them how to slake or chalk. Also how to dodge a blow from the sticks which bad boys throw. <laughs> Twenty froggies grew up fast, bullfrogs they became at last. Not when dunce was in the lot, not one lesson they forgot. Polished in a high degree, as each froggy ought to be. Now they sit on other logs, teaching other little frogs. <laughs> He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his namesake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thou anointest my heart. Thou rod and my seth, they come for me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thy, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Spider in the Fly by Mary Howard. Will you walk into my parlor? Said the spider to the fly. She's the prettiest little parlor that ever you did spy. The way into my parlor is up a winding stair, and I have many curious things to show when you are there. Oh, no, no, said the little fly. Trust me is in vain, for who goes up your winding stair can never come down again. I'm sure you must be weary, dear, with soaring up so high. Mm -hmm. Just come my little bed, said the spider to the fly. There are pretty curtains drawn around the sheets are fine and thin. And if you like to rest a while, I'll snugly tuck you in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, no, said the little fly. I've stopped and heard it say, they never never wake again who sleep upon your bed, said the cunning spider to the fly. <laughs> Dear friend, what can I do to prove the warm affection I've always felt for you? <laughs> it's the word of all us nice. I'm sure you're very welcome. Will you please to take a slice? <laughs> oh, no, no, said the little fly. <laughs> And so that cannot be. I who lived in your pantry and I do not wish to sleep. Sweet creature, said the spider. You're witty and you're wise. How handsome are your glasses? You have to me your eyes. I have a little looking glass of Parmax on your shelf. If you'll step in one moment, dear, you shall behold yourself. I think you drink too soon, she said. For what you please to say, in bidding you good morning, I'll call it half the day. <laughs> the spider turned him round about and went into his den, for well he knew the silly fly would soon come back again. So he wove a subtle web in a little corner sly, and set his table ready to dine upon the fly. Then he came out to the store again, and merrily did sing, Come hither, hither, pretty fly, with pearl and silver wings. Your robes are green, feathers are crest upon your head. Yours are like the diamond fly. Alas, alas, how very soon, the silly little fly. Hearing his wily, flattering words came slowly flitting by. With buzzing wings she hung aloft, the nearer and nearer drew, thinking only of her brilliant eyes and green of her <laughs> thinking only of her crested head, poor foolish thing at last. Up jumped the cunning spider and fiercely held her fast. He dragged her up his winding stair into his dismal den, within his little parlor, but she ne'er came out again. And now, dear little children, who made the story read. To idle, silly, flattering words, I pray you never give heed. And to an evil counselor, close heart and ear and eye. And take a lesson from this tale, the spider and the fly. <laughs> <laughs>